<laughs> okay, I've started the recording. Okay. Well, we'll you clean missed, it up you now. Missed the, you missed the best part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Am <laughs> I getting adjusted? Okay. <laughs> John, how are you enjoying your summer down in the warm weather instead of the mountains? Well, we spent a good time in the mountains. We were back up in Gold Hill for a couple of weeks and it was lovely. You know, when anybody asks about why, how do you get along when it's 105, 110 degrees? I say, well, how do you get along when it's five below and the wind is blowing the snow horizontally? What do you do? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing here. We just, Hunker down until the temperature goes down a bit. Yeah. 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 Well, that was a real switch for me um, with this hot summer that we've had. We just did a, a couple of weeks in Alaska. I think the highest temperature we saw was about 73. And customarily, it was around 50 degrees in the mornings. So it was just really a change. That's like our winters. Uh, it was really a, a change. Your trip was two weeks? Um, yeah, two. Nice. Two in a day, yeah. It was, it was really great. Um, I had not been to Vancouver before, nor Victoria, and thoroughly enjoyed both of them, enough that Cheryl uh, and I are talking about maybe going back and spend a little bit more time just there. Uh, the only part about the whole thing is from Lake Placid to Vancouver, it's just one hell of a long trip. Yeah. And uh, you had family there with you, didn't you? Yeah, we had uh, all of our family, 10 of us. Yep. So that was the purpose of the trip was to get together. Buzz, where's your closest airport? Ours here in Florida. Yeah. We're centrally located and we tell people if they're flying in, you know, our choice is to meet them in Fort Myers because it's 65 miles, an hour and a half. Uh, it's a smaller regional airport. It's easy. You whip in there, you know, run in, run out. Um, the other choices though are Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and then uh, Tampa, Orlando. But um, you're talking about huge airports at that at those things you know you yeah. they're highly structured and you really got to know where you are and where you're going yep. um, you just can't sort of wander in off the street and say now where do i go but uh i used to love so when i was in with ibm and boca raton i tried to fly out of uh, west palm beach as much as i could because that was an airport that you'd fly into, look out the window and look at the parking lot to see if your car was where you left it. <laughs> and, you know, and they didn't have uh, concourses or anything. You walk down the steps, thank you. <laughs> but that size airport is just delightful to fly in and out of. And Fort Myers used to be that way, but well, Bernie can tell you, he flies in and out of Fort Myers. But um, it's a nice, busy airport, regional airport. Yeah, and, very uh, nice airport. We love it. Yeah, it's clean and and friendly, and it's you know we like it. Somebody's got some background noise going on. There's like a conversation going on in background somewhere. That's been there before, has it? Yeah. Yeah, it's here every time. Oh, really? Frankfurt doesn't have the problems that some of the bigger airports have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, George, you and George run down to Sheridan Airport when you want to go to the airport. Sheridan, yeah. <laughs> so uh, three weeks ago, we spent a week in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, and rented a nine-bedroom house. There were 11 of us, three generations. Everybody made it. And uh, we had a good time. Um, Nine bedroom house. Nine bedroom house. Yeah, it had a it had a, a basketball goal. It had a pickleball court. It had horseshoes. It had a ping pong table, swimming pool with a a, a slide, a water slide. That was probably that was probably that was probably Dolly Parton's guest house. <laughs> we went to uh, one thing that 
I thought was particularly interesting. We went to Andrew Jackson's home, the Her Hermitage, and uh, the War of 1812, I always thought that uh, the Brits started that war in order to take back some of the colonies. That's not what the museum said. It said that uh, there was a group in the United States that they named the Warhawks, and, and Congress passed a war resolution against Great Britain. King George III was still the monarch in Britain, and he did not want to have a war, but uh, James Madison signed the Declaration of War. And it, the purpose of the war was to take over the Canadian territory. Uh, we had purchased Louisiana nine years before that, which doubled the size of the area of the United States. And now this group wanted to add a similar amount of territory by taking over the British area of Canada. And so that's why all those battles were up around Lake Champlain and, and up in uh, you know, New England and, and uh, southern Canada. So uh, the Battle of New Orleans was, was 1815, January of 1815, but the Treaty of Ghent ended, officially ended the war in November of 1814, Ghent, G-H-E-N-T, being in Belgium, I believe. But that word didn't get over to the southern United States, and so the British had some forces that attacked New Orleans and Andrew Jackson. He had quite a motley crew of, of uh, freed slaves and Indians and, and Tennessee uh, boys and troops and uh, they, they defended New Orleans and he, that brought him a lot of fame. But he was also, also talked about, he was the governor of Eastern Florida for uh, uh, two or three years, appointed by the president uh, and, and uh, that's when Florida had two capitals. I forget what they were, but uh, but Florida went all the way into Alabama, and that was all. Yeah, I just I read recently where it'll be 1866 before the United States flag has flown over Florida longer than Spain's flag flew over Florida. Yeah. Hmm. A little trivia question for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you know that Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, um, I believe Newfoundland, um, all conducted a vote about that time to join the United States and it barely failed. Otherwise, those uh, Canadian provinces would have been a part of the Northeastern United States. I never heard that. Huh. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Well, I guess we can hang up now, Bernie. We've run out of anything to talk about. <laughs> we've, we've thrown out our trivia. <laughs> I'll open the subject of our gathering next year. Yeah. I think that's a, a great idea. 65 years. And, and what I would suggest is we return to our roots. We go back to West Lafayette, maybe a football weekend, and spend some time at the Sig House and show them that even when you're in our elevated ages, there's still life. And just have a good time gathering of where we started. Sounds good. That's, good idea. Idea. Yeah. That's what we did last time. Yeah. What what this what in you in this this year, 2023 or 2022? No, no, not this year. Because our, our 65th is next year, 2023. Okay. So I know okay. math wasn't your subject, George. What's that? <laughs> I, I just <laughs> spoke in the, I, math was not your subject, you know. I see. I can't <laughs> figure ass, ass, sir. <laughs> yeah, just a little red ass. At, at ease, John. <laughs> so so uh, last time when we didn't laugh yet, we stayed at the union building. And we did it in a, a non-football weekend, so it was easier and less expensive to get the room reservations. It's all new now, too. Yeah, it's new, and they raised the price a little bit. So anyway, um, 
What are your thoughts about a football weekend versus a non-football weekend? I vote for a non-football weekend. Yeah, I'd vote for that too. Yeah, I, that'd be fine with me. Okay, uh, football weekend, the other thing is the undergraduates are, I mean, they're over at tailgates and, you know, um, uh, uh, non-football weekend. Okay, let me do some yeah. That'd be good. I would, I would vote for a non-foot, non you know, I don't, it really doesn't matter to me, but I'd, if given a preference, I'd rather go non-football because of, I think it would be easier to get around, easier to have, get meals at restaurants, reservations, the whole nine yards, plus the house, I think we'd, we'd get more attention at the fraternity house Yeah. Uh, during yeah. a football weekend, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on, so. Yeah, yeah. I'd say none, that's what I would vote. Yeah, I think that's sound too. Um, would you uh, would you go for an all boys group or do you want to include everybody? All boys. I think all boys makes a that's a, makes a lot of sense. Just to enable us to enjoy each other's company and and uh, you know I I would be in favor of that. Yeah, I vote all boys. Pardon? I vote all boys. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay with all boys. I vote all girls. <laughs> okay. I was thinking that way too, Pete. <laughs> Uh, how many of us consider ourselves female? <laughs> well, that's not a, that wouldn't be hard to come up with a number. You have to go younger than we were, but you come up with that real easily. <laughs> Transgender, ten-year-old girl that really isn't a girl just got reinstated by a judge that the attorney general had. She tried to overturn a new law in Indiana where transgenders can't play on girls' sports. And the lady judge overturned it temporarily. So the little 10 year old gets to go play softball. Yeah. Really? That's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Even Bruce, even Caitlyn Jenner is coming out against biological female playing in male sports. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, biological male playing in female sports. Yeah. yeah. So is it decided that uh, it's Lafayette at 23? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the weather going to be? Everybody but vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we ought to do it in September, I think, so, uh, so the weather will be, yeah. be better. Be well. good. We'll try to keep it under 100, John. <laughs> I don't know if I can drive between Indianapolis and Frisco. What's that? Say again? I don't know. If, I'm not a very good driver anymore. I don't know if I could drive between Indianapolis and Purdue. From Indianapolis. I'd have to fly into, I'd have to fly into Indianapolis, Indianapolis, right? Probably. Yeah, probably. You can match up your flights. You can ride with somebody. Yeah, you can match up your flights pretty easily. And uh, if you want to. Yeah make a real excursion out of it, you can probably still fly into West Lafayette. Uh, has anybody ever run into a problem of a rental car agency not wanting to rent you a car because you're damn old? No, I, have not. I haven't, but I've heard of it. I have, I've heard that. Yeah. No, I yeah. have not, not encountered that. So uh, maybe I told this before, but I'm, I'm now a resident of Florida. Got my Florida driver's license last year and it expires in 2027. The laws in Illinois are that after age 85, you have to, you have to driver's license is only good for one year and you have to take a driver's test each year to renew it. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's exactly why I'm a resident of Florida. <laughs> because yeah. of that and a few other little things called taxes. Yeah, yeah a few other things. Well, I think I, I told you all this, but my mother lived with us until she was about 84, 83, 84, and we, then she moved to Indianapolis. And uh, 
long after, I mean, two or three years after she died, I was still getting a postcard from the state of Florida addressed to her, wanting to know if you wanted to renew your driver's license by mail. Just mail. Check here and let us know. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's well, part I would... of the reason I quit riding motorcycles. Honestly, uh, Florida, you know, I thought motorcycles in Florida were synonymous, but it's not a good place to ride bikes. It's, uh, it's a dangerous place. Too damn many old people driving. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Too tough, sir. I, I, thought too tough. Learned, I thought you learned your lesson on River Road, Pike Busey. Yeah. Uh, I've had a lot of bikes since then. <laughs> so, Bernie, I nominate you since you're tied in more closely with all things considered to take a look at the calendar and, and yep. look and see what makes sense. I'll research it. And uh, Mary and I are going, going down for homecoming. Uh, that's September 24, 25 weekend. And how are they, uh, they going to do the annual meeting when they did the night game? Pardon? I wonder how they'll do the annual meeting when it's a night game. When it's a what? It's night, a night game. It's a night, night game. Oh, it's a night game. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know how the house will do an annual meeting if it's a yeah. night game because they usually yeah. have it in the morning and the games at noon. Yeah. Yeah. They get it, right. I don't know. Well, uh, the games at seven thirty p.m. Yeah. And for the first time, out of the three children we had and the five grandchildren, the very youngest of those eight has expressed interest in Peru. She's a junior at Nutra High School. And so uh, she and her father are coming down and I've lined up a uh, Sigma Chi to be her tour guide. He's a, he, he's a registered tour guide with the university. So uh, he's gonna take her on a tour Saturday afternoon. And then I have four tickets to the football game right adjacent to the student section. Oh. <laughs> that would have been in the end zone in our time. <laughs> Close you know, to it, it, probably. Yeah. I don't. With a 7.30 game, don't they realize that's going to put it well after our bedtime when it ends? <laughs> <laughs> I'd tape them anyway. I never watch them live. I don't like advertisements. Yeah, that was too bad the last minute of, uh, of the Penn State game. It was. Yeah. yeah. Poor, poor time management on the part of the coach. Should, should have, should have run the ball, beat yep. up the clock. Yeah, not good. Yeah, yep. that turnover killed him. Yeah. Yes, yeah, not good. It, the second quarter didn't do him a hell of a lot of good either. But the rest of the game was a very good, evenly yeah. played game. Yeah, the quarterback looked pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Well, and that, 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 that one, one that one run, uh, that one run down the field, he completed all like eight out of nine passes. Yeah, he's got one target. <laughs> he's got what? <laughs> that one target, the kid that he played high school football with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that kid's he, he gets open. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's as good as David Bell. I thought they, I thought the loss of David Bell would be devastating, but this kid seems to be as, at least as good. Yeah, he does. Where did he transfer from Iowa? I believe so. I think so. Yep. It's going to be, you know, it's a lot different now where they can transfer and then before too much longer, they'll be paying them. They are paying. What do you mean? Yeah. They're already they're paying. Yeah. <laughs> they just try to open it up to the public. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, re I read today that the Clemson coach uh it got signed a new contract he's making 11 million dollars a year would you believe that oh. 11 million oh. <laughs> I mean, come on i didn't think clemson looked at it on saturday what's that i thought georgia tech gave him a good game until the end of the game yeah i didn't watch that game but i i just it was I 17 to 14 clemson uh until the Close to the end of the third quarter. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm a to one forty-one to ten. Well, the money that's running around in sports is totally obscene. When you have 
the Saudis setting up the their own golf tour and they're paying 150 million just to show up. Yeah, is just <laughs> absurd. And then in the paper today, I can't even remember the team. A quarterback for one team just signed a four-year contract for 237 million dollars. Yeah. Well, that was uh, he's at um, um, he was at Seattle. Uh, what's his name? Uh, was it down Wilson? in Texas? Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. He's uh, no, Wilson. no Wilson's now playing for the Broncos. Yeah, Denver. Yeah, at, he signed that big contract. <laughs> the guy that signed that contract, I think. No, it, well, maybe, but there was another one that I saw on the was paper it? today. Huh. Hmm. Oh, Michigan State hired this guy, Mel Tucker, who had a, about zero coaching experience. He's, he's getting eight million dollars a year. I mean, he's a he's a, he's a he had played football. I mean, I, you know, he had a re, you know a bit of a resume, but no coaching resume. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's getting eight million bucks a year. I'm saying, what the hell's going on with these guys? It's terrible. It's ridiculous. Have any of you guys been watching the U.S. Open and seeing this uh, Tiafo play? Yeah. Tiafo? Yeah, I, we yeah. saw him beat Nadal. Boy, that was impressive. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then, and then uh, he beat the guy, the Russian guy, yesterday. And yeah. he played just, at, just 24 hours after that fourth set match with Nadal. And he was terrific. He, just, he looked even better than he did against Nadal. Yeah. He's... Quite amazing, and as far as I'm concerned, he came out of nowhere. I, and yeah. I don't know where he's been, what kind of tournaments he's been in, but I, his name just came up, and I said, what's his name, Tiafo? He must be from Solomon Islands or something. I, I saw him a year ago play in one of the tournaments, but uh, I mean, he, he, he wasn't doing anything like he's been doing at the U.S. Open. Yeah, quite a story. Parents emigrated from Sierra Leone, and his father was a maintenance guy at this tennis, at these tennis courts. And he has a twin brother. His mother worked as a nurse on the night shift. Yeah. Quite a story. First, first American player to get into the semifinals of the U.S. Open since 2006. Yeah. He has a backhand that is so powerful and so pinpoint. He hits so many scores into the very corner of the court. Hard backhand shots. It's just impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Good on him. Was he the one that hit one behind his back? You hit. You went around, but his oh, back and hit. That's the Australian guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right. Uh, no, not he's, that was me. he's got mental problems. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to try it? <laughs> yeah. They should. They should ban him from playing. I play that. That kind of conduct is absurd. Totally. <laughs> totally ridiculous. He's a hell of a player. Too bad. He's an idiot. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he belongs to the middle institute. Of, George, there's a lot of idiots in higher places than that. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're talking politics now, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you were talking about Newfoundland and, and the like being voted on to become U.S., I'm thinking about Trump trying to buy Greenland. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. You guys know that the queen died today, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. See that she had. No. I mean, re she was on some kind of medical. She board. passed away. She Long didn't left the queen. Oh. But she was 93. She was queen when the eyes now. 96. 96. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's. Honorable oh. woman. Yeah. Yeah, she brought a lot of class to us for that job. It was you know, our 25th wedding anniversary, we went over to London and I said to Sandy, are we going to watch any of the royalty? She said, no, no, no. And we got over there and the queen was showing up at a hotel that was close to ours. And we waited outside three hours to try and see her. She never did see her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Did she show up? I don't know if she showed up or not, but if she did, she come in, came in some back way. <laughs> okay, why don't we go around the, around the horn. Harry, start us off. I had a question for you before we start that, if you don't mind. Sure. Do you know? Do you have any more information um, on the Sig uh, uh, House uh, problem that they had with the seniors earlier this year? How how did that work itself out? Yeah, I don't have as much information as I'd like to have. Um, all of the all of the seniors were deactivated from Delta Delta chapter. And they were not allowed back in the house. Their mothers were not allowed into the house for the Mother's Day weekend. And uh, they were not allowed to come back on the property for the rest of the school year. Um, I don't know what legal action, if any, occurred against these guys. Um, then the chapter, for other reasons, was put on some serious probation by the interfraternity council. Really? Yeah, yeah. They had they had, had alcohol against the rule. They can have alcohol, but they have to have it limited, and they, the people can't bring it. Or I don't. There were it was. Evidently, some of the other members in and this one, the university, this is the IFC, they can, they can now regulate. And, and the story I hear is from legitimate, I, you know, from responsible sources that some of the other fraternities have a hard on for Bell and Bell. And, and they, they uh, this incident with the seniors was sort of a catalyst for them to use some other incidents to get this probation put on. So International was involved, the Grand Prix was involved, everybody's in support of the chapter. Uh, it's gonna be a tough year and, and uh, we're lucky, I believe the chapter's lucky to have this guy Ryder Ellison, I forget his last name, as the consul. He's a very, very sharp guy. And uh, but, so they had alumni meetings and, and um, uh, they, they're working with the top leadership in the house to make sure that, you know, they don't, that they keep things in line for the next couple of semesters. Um, they've started something new in pledge training. Pledge training, you know, by international is limited to five weeks. So uh, they're having an alumnus come in and speak to the pledges and they're inviting the upper class to sit in. Uh, each week for five weeks on Sunday to talk about the chapter and the history of the chapter and the importance of the chapter house. And, you know, it's, it's part of the program to get everybody sensitized to how important it is not to screw up. So Phil Steele is going to be the first speaker on the 18th of September and then they just me to speak on the uh, on the following Sunday, Sunday of, of homecoming weekend. So it's 25th of September. And then it'll be three more weeks where we'll have, you know. And um, Dawson, uh, the, uh, Dawson Odie's the pledge trainer. He's very sharp. So we uh, lost you. Pardon? We lost your audio. Oh, you lost no, my audio? Yeah. Oh, no, uh, I'm, I'm hearing you. <laughs> Oh, you're here. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Anyway, uh, I, I, I like that idea of in pledge training of having alumni speak to them each week. And we can use uh, we can use a PowerPoint slides if we want to. So you guys' pictures will probably be in some of those PowerPoint slides. So, uh, well, Bernie, wasn't there some legal action to try to recover money for the damages to the house? Yeah, and I don't know how that came out. I don't know. But all of the damage was repaired and uh, the house was in good shape when the guys came back a couple weeks ago. It was in good shape. So, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll know more, you know, when we have the next call, it'll be after, home, after I've been down there for homecoming. So I'll, I'll know a lot more. 
Now, were they excommunicated from the from Sigma Chi or just from the chapter? No, just from the, they were deactivated, so they were not excommunicated from the general fraternity. Okay. So I haven't said anything, but as far as I'm concerned, they ought to be taken off the mailing list, the alumni mailing list. Yeah. Covering money is going to be almost impossible. They don't have any going to cover it. So it, that would be really, really amazing if they got anything back. Yeah. I don't know. I'll find out. Okay. Anything else? No. John? Well, on a different subject, I just got the regular letter from the chapter about donation like and i am so proud that we are only one of only three classes that lead the, all the rest of the years in the number of us that have donated to the chapter i think that says a lot for us yeah, for sure for sure yeah classes 68 and 73 are the other two classes Right. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, it's really unique. Some of the class of 95, they, they're going to be like this. They get together regularly. And uh, uh, Gavin Phillips is in that class. And Eric Morgan, who owns the Strand down in Naples, he's in that class. They're going to be a good class. But we're at a disadvantage now because there'll be less numbers all the time. Because we're sorry, a lot older than I said we're at a disadvantage because uh, at our age, our class numbers will go down faster than the younger ones. Right. Well, they'll have to do it by percentage. Yeah. <laughs> percentage left. <laughs> I was looking for an edge, John. <laughs> okay. A anything else? Okay, Harry, start us off with for the good of the order. Harry Thompson, for the good of the order, we're going to have it for the good of the order. So just what would you like to say for the good of the order? Oh, just uh, pretty much be careful of what's coming over the internet. I've been, I've been working on this for a week, a couple, three hours a day, just trying to get my my, my internet. As soon as we get home, we're going to finally call our uh, internet service provider. We have a new, we have a new modem, only a couple of months old, and this th this really screws things up. So be careful. Yep. Oh, incidentally, Melanie just passed me a note to let you know that I am officially retired. It's on June thirtieth. Got your insurance off. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the company is Melanie is taking care of all the um, bookkeeping with taxes and Medicare and insurance and all of that. So she's busy. I'm not. I just sit. <laughs> home. I I sit home and read the paper, and she comes in here in the office and works. So anyway, it's about. That's about done, but I am retired. All right. well, Congratulations, Jerry. Career. Congratulations. Yeah. Yep. Kurt, what's going on? Uh, well, not a whole lot. Um, minor medical problems, but um, um, I had some dizziness spells and had one one night at, uh, uh, at five o'clock in the in the morning, I got so dizzy, and I tried to get up to get to the bathroom to upchuck, and couldn't couldn't make it there. I fell down and hit the chair, landed on the floor. My wife brought me over a wastebasket, but all I did was dry feet for two hours. So it was. Uh, so I went to see the doctor about it, and I'm still doing tests to see. To see why that happened. Hmm. Wow. It shouldn't drink that much. <laughs> oh. 
Here comes Bill Stern. Yeah, Here right. comes Bill Stern. He's uh, signing in for, we can't hear you yet, Bill. We're... There I'm we that. go. Yeah. Hey, hey, Bill. All right. He just got up from his nap. I had to update my app for the Zoom, I guess. Oh, okay. But well, welcome. Made... Good to see you, Bill. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you. Sorry I'm late. Well, we're, we're just going having a, 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 for the good of the order. We're going around for the good of the order. So we'll, have, we'll put you on last for the good of the order. All right. No problem. And, yeah. And ask, ask you to step in as the next for the good of the order, brother. Bob Husey. Oh, oh, me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other, the other Bob Husey. Yeah, well, no, I'm just napping here. <laughs> oh, I think we... We're calling you to tell about it. <laughs> uh, I've got to take this. Take someone else for a minute. Okay, Steve Clark. Yeah. Well, it's uh, kind of quiet around the house now, and uh, getting used to that. We're getting one well, though. Uh, I wanted to thank Kurt for taking their granddaughter out to lunch. Uh, I hope she didn't bore him to death. Oh, <laughs> she was great, Bill. Bill. She's uh, kind of a, a little bit older than what you think she is. Yeah, she was great. She's, you ought to be real proud of her. Oh, we, uh, we got four of them we're proud of. How old is she? Uh, does, she work, does she work at Disney? Yes. Yeah, she's working at Disney. Great. Then, working uh, hard at Disney. She, <laughs> to say the least, yeah. Uh, other than that, we need rain. It's been hotter than heck, but it's cool today. But uh, things are moving along just like normal, I guess. But uh, been a lot of getting used to things different. Uh, you, you'll be able to join us next uh, fall at Purdue, won't you? I, th I think so. They probably won't let me drive over there, but if, if I get a rider. But the thing is, somebody can fly in Indianapolis, and we might even pick them up to come down or bring sure. their rental down here and take my van up, the handicap van up. We might not even arrange for one of the undergraduates to, to you know, to provide transportation. Well, I've got to have a, they got to use my van because I've got a scooter. Yeah, right. Uh, ramp. Yeah. So we got a new yeah. van. But it's that into the December, so I was going to get a new van, but since December, well, they brought a Toyota out. I couldn't, that's what I wanted. And uh, couldn't get it because they built a console right where I walked from the back middle end of the driver's seat. So they're looking at a Chrysler now, but they only get about one a year. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, Zeus. Yes. Well, um, the um, I have a granddaughter uh, who's a senior at East Lansing High School who's uh, aspiring to be an engineer. And uh, she's really excited about Purdue and she's applying. Well, I've been down there to visit and uh, has been invited back for a, an engineering seminar at the, um, uh, uh, what's the name, um, the astronaut? Um, Neil Armstrong. Armstrong. The Neil Armstrong Center. So we're excited about that. Finally, uh, after uh, putting three kids through Wake Forest, we got somebody that's going to go to Purdue, I think, I hope. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. uh, we're really excited about that. Um, we're fine. Our, we're in good health. Uh, my son from Charlotte, uh, Sigma Chi from Wake Forest, was here over the weekend, Labor Day, with his wife. We had a great time. We went over to the Lake Michigan to Grand Haven. Had a nice time there. Um, I am disappointed. Sigma Chi in Michigan State does not exist anymore. The Phi Games bought the house that the, that the Sigs were forced to uh, relinquish when they got kicked off campus. And I understand the same thing happened at South Carolina where one of my granddaughters is uh, going to school. And it, it kind of troubles me that Sigma Chi is just, um, seems to be having these issues. And I'm really troubled to hear that, that Delta Delta's got some issues like this. And I, it, it, um, 
it really bothers me that it sounds seems like the leadership is um, is lacking. So um, otherwise, we're good. We're, uh, we'll be going to Florida right after the New Year, down to our place there in Ponte Vedra, and um, we look forward to. I look forward to getting together with you guys. Uh, we're down to. I was looking at the picture. I have a, the pledge class picture in the den here, and we're down to fifty percent on our class. And hope it doesn't get any worse than that between now and then. So um, that's it. I'm glad to see everybody else and uh, wish you all well. Thanks, Gus. John Andrew? Well, I just checked the thermometer. It's only 96 today. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but we are due for a cold spell. It's going to get down to 90, 91 in the next few days. Possibility of a little rain, but... Otherwise, life is good. Uh, we had a great trip when we went camping up Colorado. I think I, I may have reported on that in our last gathering, so I don't want to bore you with more, but had a good time, spent about two weeks in Gold Hill and reconnected with old friends and activities. And, you know, had a great time reliving with the life that we enjoyed there, but being down here during winter, we like reliving that as well. So we're good, health is good. Um, day-to-day -day life, you know, we're, we're active in the community here. So it's, uh, everything's good. Oh, I was gonna, no, the point I wanna make was about the number of us that have been contributing to the fund. And uh, so you know, we talked about that already. George Martin. Yeah, I, uh, 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 getting along okay, I guess. I had, uh, had a, had a few health issues now and then, but uh, uh, still, I'm still driving. So don't worry. We're, Pete and I both have two sons that would uh, so 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 uh, <laughs> chauffeur the folks that go fly in Indianapolis to Purdue. Would you think so, Pete? Yeah, probably would. They're, they're both. <laughs> yeah, I know they're both farmhouse, but they can go over there. <laughs> Cause some trouble. <laughs> okay, well, um, that, that's about main thing that uh, we've been doing. I'm, I'm, I think next Monday, I'm going to go over and uh, I told you last time I'm going to go over and spend about uh, eighteen thousand an acre for a farm that's right next to one I bought in the eight, about eighty five or eighty six for uh, 1200 an acre. So, so you can see, see, see how much that is. Uh, and I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't have a million dollars in the bank. I, I, it, it wouldn't make any sense. But uh, well, Richest farmland in the world. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you gotta keep in mind, that's, that's almost 40 years ago. You know, prices do go up over that span of time. Oh yeah, but that's, that's that. Most of that's been in the last three years, hmm. and that uh, and the, this county is next to Indianapolis, and they're going to build a great huge uh, industrial center out on uh, just out northwest of Lebanon, and that's the main reason. That just the and that just raises all the prices uh, in the county. So, uh, so I, I, if I survive doing that, <laughs> I think I'll be all right. <laughs> but the other thing that uh, we've done, uh, I guess uh, my grandson that plays basketball, got, it's be a senior in Zionsville this year. He is, uh, he, the other day he interviewed out at uh, the Air Force Academy at uh, Colorado and uh, I didn't, I don't know that he might be good enough to, to play there. I don't know. He's, uh, he's pretty good, but uh, uh, he, uh, uh, we'll see what happens this year. This is senior year, so. He's see that. That's great. He what? He's too tall to fly. Yeah, he's too tall to fly. You're right. There, he's, there, uh, there are other jobs he could. He can be a weatherman like he were. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I don't think he'll end up going there, but uh, 
he he's has quite a bit of interest and uh, not as much as his uh, playing partner does, but uh, the two of them uh, that's kind of unusual to have two in uh, senior class. Uh, uh, they've been together since the eighth grade or seventh grade or whatever. Whenever they started, I guess probably the fourth grade, and uh, so they work well together uh, for sure. But uh, I, so that's about all we've got right now. We're uh, we're looking forward to uh, uh, being uh, getting started on harvest. Uh, like Pete said, it, it's hard to tell what's out there, and uh, so we uh, we'll get that started pretty soon. And my doctor said this morning. Uh, he told me, I've had two heart doctors now tell me, uh, you just better go to work. That'd be the best thing for you. <laughs> Do something that's not too extraneous, but he, he said, you better go to work. Keeps your mind straight. You can probably get back in the semis. Yeah, you can get back in the semi. <laughs> now you're going to discourage Harry Thompson from his retirement uh, Yeah, that's right. Plan. Well, I I figure my son's going to retire me pretty soon. <laughs> I've got a question for you two farm boys. Do you use anything like drone technology or multispectral imaging to take a look they, at your fields for health? They do very much, and it's becoming a lot more popular because they're getting sophisticated equipment where they could do infrared and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, my we own a drone, and uh, we. I've used it quite a bit to picture. We haven't, my son uh, is the only one who knows how to fly it. And you have to get a license for, for them now. And he's got a license. He flies it and, and uh, he pictures the crop. But uh, he, he needs to spend more time working on it. And, uh, and so he gets to uh, coordinate with the computers. Uh, what, what he's got out there, what it takes picture of. And uh, so that's what really takes, takes a lot of time. But the, all the seed corn companies and, uh, and fertilizer companies, uh, they use them a lot now, get a lot of information. Well, it's from, one thing to take a picture. It's another thing to know how to analyze it and determine that's right. what the picture is telling you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it's... It's like, just like any technology, uh, it's a little slow maybe at first, but, but I think it'll be here very strongly soon. Yeah. I got, I got something, George reminded me of something, a story, a good story that I wanted to tell you. I've got a granddaughter by the name of Abby who graduated from Florida State and um, had a job in Atlanta and she and her two uh, Hi-Fi roommates decided they wanted to go to New York, Manhattan, and get get three jobs and live live in New York. So uh, they figured they needed to make eighty thousand dollars a year to live in New York. So they went to Manhattan and started looking for places to stay, and they found one had no air conditioning, uh, seven seven story, no uh, no elevator. For sixty-one hundred dollars a month, <laughs> and so the guy said to them, "We have you have to prove to me that you can afford this." So they had to give them what their either what their father's worth or something like that. So he came. He came after he got all the things. He came back to him and said. Well, you can afford the sixty-one hundred dollars, but you can afford sixty-six hundred dollars. So I'm going to charge you sixty-six hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm sorry. Where is this, Kurt? New York City. New York City, man. Wow. wow, wow. And you wonder why we love it when the New Yorkers move to Florida. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, sure. Hey, Bill, I'm sorry to run, but I have another appointment. I got to go. Okay, Bob. Thanks for your way. See you, Buzz. Thank Bill you. Stern, for the good of the order.
Uh, well, sorry I was late, uh, but uh, I guess, let's see, we've started a new hobby. We're farming on the roof of our sunroom. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, we've gone, we've had corn that we've harvested, and uh, we got some uh, zucchinis we've harvested, made zucchini bread, and uh, crooknut squash. We've got squash up there. And the thing that surprised me is got a lot of watermelon. But boy, it grows forever and it takes forever. They're, they're just little things. They just hardly grow. I mean, I don't know when they're going to get the real watermelon. But the plants are, you know, I have to pick up the melons and move them back into the 4 by 12 is that what I have? Yeah, 4 by 4 by 12 uh, dirt pot and uh, so that they don't get the heat of the roof, you know. But anyway, that's a new nice hobby. I've taken up farming. Well, we did, we put it up on the roof because the deer, otherwise, if you tried to plant it, we got plenty of room on the surface, but the deer come in here and just eat it all. So uh, <laughs> you could yeah. imagine I tied it up, I'm trying to think what would that be, maybe 25 or 30, 50 pound bags of soil. And then I got a hose up there and then rock for the bottom of the box and that was half the well, ninety percent of the battle. Planting the stuff and harvesting it is nothing. But did you have to? Did you have to reinforce the roof? No, it's it's designed for a pretty heavy snow load, so I'm not concerned about that. But uh, you know, it, it doesn't have the bedding and all that sort of thing like you know normal roof would have. Any put, but anyway, that's been, been an interesting uh, hobby so far. Great. Hey, Bill, are, are you still operating? Yeah, oh still? yeah. Yep. But we've yeah, we I've said we but I we switched over. You everybody's probably heard of Airbnb. So uh, I don't but I don't rent the whole place. I just rent a room, you know, to them. And uh, so I don't have to deal with any taxes. And uh, they only charge me three percent to book the person. And since the person only has a room, they don't have the whole house, they don't they don't destroy it or anything. It, 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 I rented it twice, but the whole house, and that's terrible. It doesn't work out. So, uh, yeah, Airbnb has been uh, pretty easy to deal with. Pretty soon, we're trying to see if we can split the lot and sell off part of it, and then uh, we'll be free and clear. We just pay off what we owe on this place and uh, and stay here, you know, but not operate the business, just operate the flat. Have lots of friends and family, and that's how you do it over. So we got plenty of room. Yeah. Great. So that's that's amazing. We had, for John, we had a hundred. They had hundred and five in Salt Lake City oh, yesterday. Wow. They broke the overall all-time ever recorded temperature. Mm -hmm. I've read some record. I've read something recently that uh, the Great Salt Lake is starting to dry up. It is, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a real, it's like they probably have all out almost everywhere except back east is water. They don't have enough water. Is is lake salt the same as sea salt? What's that? Is lake salt the same as sea salt? Well, you know, that's where Morton, Morton's got what is out here. So they made salt from the Great Salt Lake mm -hmm. when they got into the rocket business. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. And, uh, You're welcome. Uh, things are pretty smooth here. I, I had, uh, as you know, I think I told you, I had knee replacement surgery on my right knee, knee June 16th. And uh, rehab's going really good. Um, the swelling's going down. I got good mobility. And, and so uh, grateful for that. No pain. And so that's good news. We're uh, going to head down to Florida October 15th. And then come back for Thanksgiving, go back down for a little bit in December, and then go back right after New Year's. So we're residents of Florida now, so we're going to get out of Illinois for at least six months. So Do you guys have to keep accurate count of how many days you're here or there for tax purposes? No, we don't do that. Um, Did you? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. Now, if I had, if the state of Illinois would challenge me, I could go back and reconstruct without a lot of problem, but I don't keep track on on, on a routine basis. <clears throat> I make sure I make sure I'm out for six months. Some states track. are more aggressive. Some states are more aggressive about that. Illinois is very aggressive. 
Uh, Michigan doesn't seem to be very aggressive about it. But uh, what they do is they go back and check their phone records. And, um, you know, that, that's basically the way they do it. When we lived in, in Illinois, in Chicago, we had a bunch of people in the building who had Florida license plates. And the, and the Illinois Department of Revenue would come in the garage and look at the plates and then tra track it back. And then they'd check these people to make sure that they were uh, legitimate Florida residents. Some were, some weren't. I don't know what the penalties were, but they did. They used to check, but we weren't. We never. I did not become a Florida resident until I left Chicago until I retired. So, um, but they do check. Yeah. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be worth their time and trouble for for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean with the Illinois laws uh, in terms of of. Uh, uh, what do you pay all my taxes for? Uh, you don't pay it on retirement income. And uh, I don't think on IRA distributions. And, uh, and then I don't have any you know, regular income anymore. So uh, my, the Illinois taxes I pay for pretty much. But like I just bought a, a, a 2020 Mercedes Benz a couple months ago, and and since I'm a Florida resident, the sales tax was four thousand dollars less than it would have been if I was an Illinois resident. Wow, so, taxes are a big difference. Oh yeah, sure. yeah, sure. yeah. Okay, I think uh, that about winds us up for today. Anybody else have anything before we sign off? I was just, I just want to add one real quick thing, if I may. Uh, my iMac that I'd had from, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe eight or eight years or so, they, Mac, Apple stopped supporting that model. So I had to go buy a new iMac for my desk, which is what I'm using now. And uh, they always say how easy it is to transfer everything from one computer to the other. Um, but regrettably, it doesn't work quite that way. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time on the phone with people out in Cupertino and other places trying to figure out exactly how this damn thing worked. And of course, the things that I, the, a lot of the features that I liked on the old iMac are not used on the new iMac. So I've had some uh, degree of frustration with it. So when you, when you upgrade because they don't support it anymore, uh, be ready for problems. <laughs> Yeah, I just had to upgrade uh, the uh, operating system, and I, I, it's caused me problems with Adobe with my uh, photo applications because yeah. now they're not all working. <laughs> they're working now, but it was some, it, it was trouble getting it straightened out. Yeah, yeah, the teenagers and the young people have a lot easier time. <laughs> it, it, the other problem you run into is when if you replace appliances, they don't make the circuit boards anymore. Yeah. You can get parts for them except for the electronic circuit boards. So I had to buy a new refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Technology change is going pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the Navy, they had the experimental and obsolete. Oh, the tax bills in Cook County are late coming out because they are having trouble with the, they had a 30 year old computer mainframe that they're replacing with new, new uh, mainframe or whatever they call them now. And so the tax bills that normally come out in August won't come out till November. <laughs> property tax bills. That's got something to do with voting probably. <laughs> you know, if you have that much trouble trying to transfer information from one laptop to another. Can you imagine what they have when they're trying to put in a new mainframe that deals with millions of accounts? Yeah, yeah right. Crazy. Right. Right. Okay, well, God bless you all. Yeah, great. Yeah. great. And Bernie, you got well. your homework. Bernie, you got your homework assignments. Right. <laughs>